Alrighty, welcome to episode three of In My World podcast. Here's a father and son podcast where we get interesting people on from all over Perth and we l- learn about three mental health discoveries that they've had in the last three months. Last week, we spoke with the amazing Steve Bradfield. We Look, learned about his story. I'm the father as well. <laughs> <laughs> the lucky father. But today, we are even luckier to have Ben Broadbridge involved, who has a very special place in my heart, um, being involved with 20 Talk in the early stages. So, Ben, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you, you got involved with 20 Talk in the very, very early days. Thank you for welcoming me in. Uh, to this uh, father father son <laughs> dynamic, I love that. Uh, like as soon as I found out it was it was you, it was your dad that you were doing it with, I was like, this is epic. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm really actually very very grateful to have um, crossed paths with you guys early on in the piece. Um, to yeah, obviously delivering some training, facilitating some workshops and stuff, and I was um, just instantly inspired by what you guys were up to. Um, and just your, you know, awareness, emotional um, and social intelligence in um, 20-somethings, you know, um, needing to have a, um, a, like more spaces and capacity and, and things that, you know, an agency to, 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 you know, carry their voices far and wide and um, over very important topics like mental health and other. So, yeah, um, yeah I just, I was I'm just really grateful, man. And yeah. um, so it's just been great to watch your um, growth and and wins as well. So, yeah. so to you. give everyone context, mm. in the very early days of 20 Talk, um, all 15 of us volunteers at the time, we signed up for a mental health first aid course. And a mental health first aid course is a mental health literacy course where you look into depression, anxiety, um, suicide, and we booked in with Ben. And I can just speak on behalf of all of the people in 20 Talk. We were just absolutely breathtaking by the amount of knowledge and the mm. lived experience. We, we were in tears pretty much and it gave us so much inspiration to kind of move forward with 20 talk with so much extra knowledge and empowerment um but tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with mm. mental health yeah so the um the mental health first aid stuff that i do now is is very far along that story but you know um, you know i'll try and keep this sort of succinct as well um army kid 50 years combined service with mum and dad, moved around a lot, developed a lot of like sharpened some social skills, like developed friendships quickly. Found that yeah. um, that some kids perhaps maybe didn't thrive, but um, I was very fortunate that as an army kid I had my voice. And um, I've always found that my voice was the, the thing and communication and people understanding humans um, was always something that was very organic and natural for me, like, I was also, I'm also a, a emotional bloke. <laughs> I'm a mm-hmm. sensitive guy, I guess. Um, mm. You know, um, I'm a Scorpio, and if you if you think astrology is anything, if there's any truth in that, then I embody the the typical traits of a Scorpio. Like I'm impassionate and I'm intense, um, and I sort of expect intensity and reciprocity from other people. Yeah. Um, you know, I tried my hands at a lot of different things in life. Um, you know, I was a de- I was DJing and music producing for. We never really stop, I don't think, with music and artistry. But um, and I still have a little jam at home now. But um, that yeah. was there was no plan B for a long time there. Um, and I had a you know I guess a local meteoric rise, <laughs> which which a lot of like people can do yeah, in their yeah, own towns. Um, but did get out there and and um, travel a fair bit. And I had some extreme highs, um, some some amazing times. Um, broad professional background as well with flying fly out world marketing sales. Yeah managing small teams and being a part of those teams. Um, and, you know, I've also got a kink and a curvature in my spine, so I've always dealt with this pain, um, like mild pain, and a combination of that and when things weren't so great in my life um, started to lead to um, some formation of really poor habits. Um, and probably when I needed started to need the help the most was when I was the least likely to ask for it. Yeah. Mm. And um, sort of this traditional view of, being a bloke, being a man, um, pulling my socks up, getting on with it, you know, not being a snowflake and all these other air quotes things and you know, all these derogatory terms that get thrown around, like, you know, that create a lot of damage. Um, I really sort of thought, well, that's what I need to be. Never really spoke that out loud, but I just had to sort of, you know, 
Um, that's that's where I was acting from. Um, was that was that somehow attached to the military background and maybe some of the dynamics you used to hear behind the scenes? Yeah, and more just role modeling as well, yeah. like what I literally see. You know, not do as I do, uh, do as I say, not as I do. It doesn't yeah. work like that. <laughs> yeah, I saw a lot of stuff um, not through the family uh, household, but broadly just in communities and the industries I worked in. Um, so I was actually like, you know, kind of deeply insecure to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, with identity, not sort of knowing, bit mm. of a Rolling Stone, like never really f- sort of had uh, a deep sort of tribe or or collection of like I had mates, heaps of mates, um, but um, never sort of I was sort of a hexagonal s- peg trying to go in a square, round or triangle mm. hole. And so what? Where was your breaking mm. point to to contrast yeah. you from that state of mm-hmm. mind mm. till you know this? empowered mental health first in aid instructor yeah. who's killing it so there's this obviously you know um, from everything going great in my life and having beautiful relationships and um you know i found myself in despair really um, i lost some people close to me um dealt with a lot of traumatic events um and not dealt with them very well either or let's say unskillfully i would say yeah, yeah. um drugs and alcohol were always a an issue for me First recreationally and binging and then, you know, more in, in the gu- uh, guilt and shame fueled sort of solo yes. oh. behind the scenes type stuff. And, and that only com- – un- and I was fully aware of what I was doing and that's what made it so much worse <laughs> because I was, um, you know, very emotionally aware that it wasn't probably the best move for me. But, you know, I was just trying to cope. Um, and then I, um, yeah, spiralled into, into severe mental illness basically. Yeah. Um, isolated myself – and compounded, all the, especially the drug and alcohol use, compounded everything. And, you know, I found myself wanting to take my life and, you know, um, that was really rock bottom for me. And I was just so fortunate that I think for, for me um, it was quite an acute sort of phase of yeah. suicidality. It wasn't prolonged over time. It wasn't dragged out over years mm. or months. It was it, it, it was like, you know, it was like my, my brain and heart said, hey, We've had enough. Like driving the flesh <laughs> suit, like no more. Like yeah, I, yeah. I'm pulling the handbrake up and pushing all the switches because you know, we don't trust you to drive us anymore for a while. And that sat me down yeah, pretty, pretty hard on my butt, on my ass, really. Well, we're we're gonna yeah. um, we're gonna ask you a few of um, those gold nuggets, yeah, um, that we have sort of learnt in the last twelve months. I, I had the same. I had an issue where there's been so many I've learnt over the years and mm. had to relearn but trying to pull it back to three for the year was pretty difficult. But one thing um, we do on this podcast is at the end of each podcast, uh, we give an opportunity for the person before to ask the next person a question. It just so happens mm. to be that I was the last person. <laughs> You're in trouble, Ben. <laughs> okay. So no, we've, got a, good. we've got a mystery question for okay. you here, which you will have to do. Uh, when you leave today so okay. i'll let you open that one so now? yeah Sweet. open it now cool what drives you at a deeper level yeah beautiful it's a really 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 good question it's juicy too um <laughs> by the way but, I, you, but you haven't got a huge amount of time sure to and so just just very very quickly i just want to say that that what i shared just before that was um sort of uh, massive upward post-traumatic growth curve at around 2015, 2016. Yeah. So that was not in the last 12 months that there's these insights, but that journey was really what fueled the, the mental yeah, health yeah. first aid and all yeah. this, everything else that's sort of the trajectory we're heading on as a team now. Um, so with this, really, uh, I think about what drives me at a deeper level and I've always wanted to be a dad. I've always wanted um, to fatherhood um, and I feel like that, is really my reason for being um and he drives ethan zane broadbridge my son easy he drives everything i do now um so it's like this profound deep and very divine thing of just this little little piece of the universe right this little beam of pure unadulterated adulterated joy um that 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 it just turns them everything inside me um in a different way now um, and that informs my relationships, how I try, how I choose and try to show up in the world every day, um, and then professionally and, and impact wise with Beyond All Bounds, our social enterprise. So, so yeah. I think it's ultimately at the core of it, though it's it's um, divinity and love, the like the purity of like mm. this this little human that 
going to be his own person, but at the same time, it's like I've got this massive um, and honourable, um, you know, responsibility to to guide and lead him to be the man he wants to be. So that's a pretty huge turnaround from 2015, 2016. Sure. Sounds, sounds to me from what you're talking about, you've got a business, you've got some staff, mm-hmm. you're doing mental health training, mm-hmm. um, you've now got, you've got a partner, you've got a son. Married for you. Wow, that's awesome. So you've really, that's good, that's, that's a hopeful message for anyone who yeah. might be struggling. It's a, you're a role model to me and the Just way you've transformed your life mm. and, and put yourself out there. And really stood up for for mm. everyone and yeah, to teach good. people that is incredible um so the next thing we do here on the in my world podcast is we're going to ask you about three mental health discoveries you've had over the last 12 months mm. these discoveries aren't anything to do with beyond all bounds yeah. understand when you're training you have to put this suit on you're gonna be you're gonna be educating mm. this is nothing to do with that education we want to know mm. you truly what you have learned um, so did you want to talk about your three different discoveries and just let everyone know on the audience? Sure, yeah. So I just wrote some very, very sparing dot points. Um, and that first one was sort of plugging into the back of what we were just mm. – that question. Thank you for that question, by the way. Um, <laughs> so good. I, I like those questions, <laughs> the juicy ones. Um, it would be absolutely the mirror that my son has held up to me as, and exposed um, perhaps things that are still – absolutely far from integrated into my life with the health the healthy balanced you know integrated masculine man like you know anything whatever the viewers think that means i believe it's the duality of the soft and the gentle and the, those skills and the you know the drive and the and that sort of healthy really healthy masculinity of like you know getting things done and whatever you want to call it but um he's exposed some some serious cracks in there so um and that's, you know, t- given me some new awareness with the mental, emotional health So stuff. that's number one? Number one. Um, and what's number two? Number two is I just wrote Buja Heals, uh, which is my connection to country and the, the massive impact that that's had on my mental health um, in the last six years, but, but especially the last 12 as well, going out on country alone, stuff like that. Yeah, and just number three? Number three is integrating lived experience wisdom yeah. into my daily life. Perfect. To do with my so, men- mental health stuff. Yeah. So we've got some good uh, good thoughts there. I'd love to hear about this. Yeah, mm-hmm. and how did you feel when you were writing those in preparation for today? A little bit tender. Yeah. 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 Okay, well. In a good way. Yeah. Well, let's talk mm-hmm. about your first one and your experience being a father. Do you want to just tell us about what you've learned about that in the last 12 months? I'll start with just a really quick vulnerable story, right? Yeah. Right? Easy was on the change table. I think he'd pooed himself for the second time in like, an hour or something because it wasn't done. Um, I was trying to tag in with my wife, to Serene, to give her space. And um, we were both, this was early on in the piece, and we were both really sleep deprived. And, you know, even in the short six months of his life now, I was, I've, I've you know, changed a lot uh, and I've adapted very, very quickly. But I found myself just overwhelmed with emotion and I, I just went, fuck. And he was on the table and he went from crying to still and he looked at me and then his face just like he was so uh, scared and he just broke into a different kind of cry and my heart broke for him in that moment wow, and me <laughs> wow, that's because i was like oh yeah right. wow, oh like yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely powerful. like and just how 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 important it is mm-hmm. for me to manage my mental emotional health because i am yes he's my mirror but everything that he sees in me is you're his world you're his center it's a of the blank universe. canvas and and you're painting right. the picture right now yep Detective. and if if it's if it's normal for dad to be inconsistent emotionally then you have to imagine that's going to shape his development wow that's good mm. that's so how do you manage obviously everyone's got a picture of being the perfect father mm. um and we we put a would put a lot of a pressure on ourselves to be that how do you give yourself some mm. slack in that process because obviously we can't be perfect all the time mm. Yeah, I just I just try to um, sort of soften to myself and just remind myself I'm human mm. and that it's okay that I had this moment and then I just think to myself, this has been a bit of a mantra for me. I just keep saying, who do you want to be right now in this moment? Who do you want to be? It um, doesn't matter about a few moments ago. Well, it's not that it doesn't matter, but it's like it's what you do with this mo- next moment. It's good self-reflection, isn't it? Yeah. Just trying to be more self-aware in the moment, yeah, I think. Yeah. When, when I imagine my childhood and I think I was one of the very lucky people who 
was raised in an incredible way. My mom and my dad, you know, they never really yelled at me. They always made me walk down the hard road. Mm. They were generous in the community. And when I hear my friends talking about their families and their upbringings, mm. you know, there's sometimes negative moments. But when yeah. I look back, I mm. can't imagine that. Sure. And I'm incredibly lucky. Yeah. And I think it's a massive privilege to be a parent, to be able to provide a child with that mm -hmm. opportunity because who they can become can help so many more people in the future when you provide provide the right foundations and and that, just what you're saying that a moment of realization and mm. impact i remember having the same with you <laughs> um <laughs> even like when you're in your early teens yeah. but he doesn't necessarily remember that sure. which is good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, that, yeah that's a powerful thing and mm. and something that um i guess we have to be kind to ourselves, but also keep keep ourselves at check yeah Needs and to still be accountable can, for that. Our partners yeah. or close friends can actually keep mm. an eye on that too. That that's Definitely. good. Yeah. And so, what foundations do you think you want to, I guess, portray onto your child and and teach your child? I think if if it's in relation to my own mental emotional health, I would say um, um, uh, emotional consistency, um, mm. or X word consistency. Just being consistent um, and that attunement that I've developed with him already um, to continue that, um, to build trust, safety in not only me but other men um, because that's very honestly, that's something I've struggled with in my life is yeah. trusting blokes. It's not been the women in my life. They've, it's been the divine feminine. It's been the, th it's been the thing in my life, the pervading yeah. thing that's healed me, helped mm. me, held me down. And unfortunately, it's been blokes that let me down. So I want to be that embodied man that I, yeah. I was hoping for for in my life at different stages would you say you had that consistent emotional regulation from your parents when you grew up it's a bit of a difficult question because i i'm someone who's experienced so much love from my parents and they were doing their best as well and yeah. in the army moving around a lot you know especially in different phases and times different postings um, emotions run high, high pressure, yeah. roles, mum and dad, the dynamic of them yeah. both coming home, talking shop, in talking in nothing but abbreviations. It was, I started to learn <laughs> them all. It was kind of weird. Um, but, you know. Roger that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Roger. Uh, there was a lot of, um, you know, sometimes inconsistency around what I would get when they came home. Yeah, that's you, you um, know, just with yeah, alcoholism and stuff. But not just my parents. I'm not saying my parents. I'm saying in general the defence forces, the old army is very different to the modern army, I think. Yeah. You talked about um, healing and, and that brings us to that second point that you mm -hmm. had. Mm -hmm. um, what was your second point? Um, I just said budja or country heals uh, and that was a big part of yeah, my sort of uh, massive, you know, upward curve i suppose with healing and integrating those big big mistakes i'd made yeah um, and the lessons and the wisdom uh, and going out on country the ocean and up in the hills finding a place and pitching a swag like just the healing capacity of of just being so, so where, you, where is your little mm, safe space i can't yeah. tell you that <laughs> <laughs> Everyone will know. There'll be a million people <laughs> rocking up there. No, it's um. No, there's some some beautiful spaces. I mean, the WA coast is just gorgeous, right? Anywhere. That's um, that's nice in general. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I like South Frio actually because where we where we're here in the studio. That is a special place in my heart because right. I was in that sheltered cove in South Beach there every day for a hundred plus days, rain, hail, shine through winter and all, facing my depression by going head on into the water in the dark in the mornings mm. alone for a lot yeah. of it. And that was there was there's a big sim, symbolic uh, something very symbolic of that yeah. right. Putting your head under the water into the depths of underneath into the dark is as close as to head on into depression as you can, and that was literally transformative for me because you know as they say like when you drop your feet in the you know the dirt or the sand or you dive under the water it's like you can't not feel a bit, a bit lighter and and there really isn't enough value put onto that by no. modern modern psychology nope. is the connection to country and that's something yeah. we actually teach um in our new mental health maintenance course which is the sewb model social emotional well-being model and that's mm -hmm. um, the indigenous connection to country and how they relate to mental health is quite different to the mm -hmm. the clinical perspective that we get taught a lot of mm -hmm. um for me personally one of the best things for my mental health is being out in the ocean yeah. just like my dad who's wearing his little 
spearfishing shirt. Mm-hmm. We go out in the ocean together and we catch craze. We, can. we, we shoot fish. We're, we're underwater. Hunting, we're meditating. Yeah. We're hunting. And, yeah. and that takes us to a, mm. a space so special yeah. that, that runs through throughout the week. So this brings me to my question around your spirituality. Mm. Um, were you always spiritual? And when did that kind of come about? Super transparently, um, I always felt that somewhere locked away there was more in me um, and I wasn't stepping into the full version of myself and yeah. um, and that's okay. Like yeah, I, yeah. it wasn't it was just the time and and that there was I needed to get I'm thirty six now. You know, when I was twenty six, sixteen, like these, you know, these chapters, I feel like but the, the moment I turned thirty is when I actually started living like consciously mm. um but all before that it was just like what am i doing what am i doing yeah, <laughs> which i yeah. know a lot of people will relate to you know um i mean adults are 60 now like i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> and yeah, so yeah. still trying to figure it out but yeah that was um these days um it's it's definitely something i'm a lot more conscious of and um you know i've got connection to a few different different aspects um not necessarily what you would call necessarily a man of faith but at the same time faith prayer reverence like anything can become a ritual right like i think mm. I, I think of japanese tea ceremonies and and how they how they how long it takes and how every movement every breath is mindful so you've just become yeah. a lot more aware of of the whole spiritual understanding or reality yeah. and influence is that well, what you're saying i think like just the divinity in all happening. of us yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i think i think just we're just you know we get caught up in the worldly and it's just like when we think if you stop and actually think about like how 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 amazingly privileged and grateful we need to be just to be breathing it's um that in itself i guess is the spiritual practice right just to yeah. have gratitude yeah. and how does this I guess, connection to spirituality, mm. connect into your life. What's mm-hmm. the tool and what's the use and benefit that you get out of, mm. you know, going down to South Beach, mm. rolling out a towel and staring out into the ocean. Sure. What's your benefit? Yeah, so um, seeing the human in myself and seeing the human and the divine in everyone else. And I heard this saying recently and it said, uh, try and do this as a practice if you can tomorrow, the next day, for the next week, month, the rest of the year. Try and look for the most generous interpretation of everyone's um, actions, behavior, attitudes, you know, and try and look for the most generous interpretation of that instead of the judgmental one. And I think that it's like, you know, because as soon as I see angry, like, angry people or whatever, I see pain. If, you know, it's because it kind of just transmutes everything away from, oh, this guy's so rude and, oh, she's an idiot. And, and it's like, whoa. It's like none of that's helpful for anyone yeah, <laughs> to, yeah. to lash lash like the wrecking ball around of these vicious words we can say, but just to see the divine in everybody and in myself, I think that's like a, it's like a daily practice, right? And when I first did our mental health course with you, I could just feel that I could feel that radiation coming from you, and people just really were drawn to you and wanted to learn and were able to be vulnerable. Mm. I think people that are connected to their spirituality that you ve- they're very visible in in their aura and and what they portray to other people um but that brings us to our third discovery mm. do you want to tell us a little bit about that yeah well, I, so i've just wrote integrating lived experience wisdom and you know that can mean a lot to a lot of different people but i think about the the breadth of the human experience is not chasing happiness and success and relationships and material things it's it's also you know, like all of that can be wonderful, but it's it's also the the polarizing swing of grief, loss, bereavement, traumatic events. Like, in, but but that there's beauty in all of that mm-hmm. as well. Um, all my biggest lessons in life have come from my biggest stuff ups, and that's a word that I'm exchanging for another. To, yeah, to, to, <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. You're allowed to swear on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I fucked up bad in my life. Um, yeah. So and. Honestly, like the the bigger the, the bigger the fuck ups have has equaled the um the deep of the wisdom or the learning, and then so it's it's like okay now I've got this newfound awareness. Well, what am I going to do to put it into my life? Okay, can I just ask yeah. you a question? Please, you, of course, because you 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 raised some very interesting things. You talk about you talk about healing. You've talked about some of the journeys. You talked about your influence. What about just the thought of forgiveness mm. and? Forgiveness of self is that mm. something for you mm. 
that's been pivotal. Yeah. Tell, tell, yeah. I, I don't um, know. It just no, came to me. Yeah, I'm well, just I, yeah, I, I, that, that, yeah, I think it's probably because you, you, you're you sensitive to this stuff too and you can probably yeah. see it in me. Because yeah, yeah. I see it in other people too when I uh, like I've realised there's been a switch flicked where they've realised they've either needed to take like personal responsibility and ownership yeah. into their own forgiveness and not look for it externally. And, and like for me, for me, like there was, it was a big deal. Like I was always trying to look for external validation from my dad, from other other men, you know, to to tell me I'm doing a good job. Yeah. And um, when I stuffed up, I'm like, I'm not doing a good job, you know. And then times taught me that it's like, no, it's this is all wisdom and lessons. It's again what you do moment to moment from now on. So yeah. So do you think loving you myself think, again? <laughs> yeah, that's good. And yeah. do you think that drives a lot of in your, I mean, you're working in the mental health field. Do you think that's an issue that's not often talked about? The whole idea mm-hmm. of, you know, we've all made mistakes. How, mm-hmm. you know, how do we see ourselves and can we, mm-hmm. you know, transition to a point of accepting that and mm-hmm. going, yeah, I've I've screwed up mm-hmm. and even maybe even apologising to people. Or what, I, I don't know. I'm just yeah. Um, no, hundred percent. I think like even with uh, like any training or anything like that, and I'm not really speaking to that, but no, you're not. It, no, it's 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 like uh, it's this core fundamental stuff. It's like relinquishing control of that and uh, cultivating acceptance over what you can't control is yeah. You know, is it's just fundamental because it's just like, is it serving you to carry? It's heavy. Bloody, it's yeah. bloody heavy. Roll yeah. it off your shoulders. It's. I feel so like good. that's really hard to do in this yeah. modern Instagram mental health world where mm-hmm. there's all this positive psycho- psychology going on. And labels. Be happy. Yeah. You know, positive thinking can get over this. Mm. And we often forget that mental health experience can be really painful yeah. and it can yeah. get dark. Mm. And I think this modern day movement of us walking away from that can be really harmful mm. and can push people away when they don't mm. lean into their lived experience. They mm. don't lean into the pain, mm-hmm. the darkness, the responsibility. Mm. Um, because well, li- cause lived experience is also current as well. It's not mm. just yeah. living. It's yeah. not just like, you know, something you learned five years ago. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm aware of stuff going on in me now I do not like, but I have a feeling mm-hmm. it's it's doing something in me that's probably – Okay, but I just don't see the end yet. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I, honestly, I think all of the pop psychology labels, these, um, you know, um, I think it's the human need to want to control and, and understand it's this thing up here that's getting yeah. us in a lot of trouble, yeah. That's good. So mm. we got our final signature mm. question from Steve and we'll try and keep this one relatively quick because we've okay. got two minutes left. Cool. Okay, as um, which you might not know, I've in my past and different jobs I've done a lot of, worked a a lot around death and had to do funerals and counselling and I've actually had to sit in front of a lot of people and actually with their families and ask the question you know what were they like what what can we learn from them and and um, trying to pull story out of people for lessons and I want to ask the question for you if Mm. you were to be unfortunate enough to die we don't know what's going to happen to us the next year or whatever Mm. what would you want the person who does your funeral to say about you that's a big one i'm sorry it's a yeah, big yeah. one but no. can, we can condense it down yeah yeah, yeah. yeah um <laughs> um celebrate me wow celebrate yourself mm. see the divine in me see the divine in yourself wow mm. don't grieve me celebrate me oh yeah. that, that gave me i'll a be bit coming of a to your funeral <laughs> with a disco ball <laughs> Well, look, we're all mortal, so it's going to happen. No, like. <laughs> no but it's, it's yeah. a, it is a big question, but yeah. I feel like I can ask that question sure. because yeah. of what I've done in the past. But yeah, I yeah. appreciate it. That's, That's awesome. Thank and you. that brings us to the end of the episode. And I just want to say thank you so much for all you've done for everyone in Perth and to 20 Talk and just being on this podcast. And you're our first guest. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you. And I, I think what you're doing is so awesome and your son and your mm. partner is so lucky and I think that's awesome, mate. Yeah. You're, a, you're a big inspiration. Thank you, mate. Uh, mate, they're, they're my inspiration too. And you guys, so thank you for inv- the invitation and um, this was super fun. Thank you. And we'll thank get you. you to leave a question for the next person as well. Got so it. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you for listening, everyone, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Podcast. Thank you.